go. You know, uh, there's Lolita. You know, it's a wonderful thing that the Lord was always on his way after doing a healing to doing something else. He was always moving around doing these wonderful works for God and through God. And in Luke 5, there was so much fame. The lepers were there and all kinds of things. Lepers were like, you couldn't wear a mask to get away from leprosy back in the day. If you were around a leper, this, the medicines that treat it today were not treat, they weren't available then. So a little touch and you would be a leper too. Can you imagine waking up one morning with your face all spotted and blotchy? And I'm not talking about zits. Uh -huh. So he touched, he touched the man with leprosy in Luke chapter 5, verse 12, 13. He touched and he says, I will make you clean. And immediately the leprosy departed. Now, I like that, don't you? I want the bad stuff to just go. And then he said, don't tell anybody, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing, as Moses commanded, for a testimony to them. That's why you should give your testimony. When the Lord's done something wonderful for you, give your testimony. But so much the more went there a fame ahead of him, abroad of him. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Can you imagine most of New York City piling in Central Park, just crashing into Central Park, some in the water, some on little boats, because they heard Jesus was over there and he was healing people. People are sick. You go all around New York City, people are ill. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and he prayed. Notice the formula for the Lord's power to withdraw himself. He wasn't watching television all day. He wasn't dancing. Maybe he danced a holy dance, right? And I love dancing. But he was about his father's business, right? And so here he was and he withdrew and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed. And then he was filled with the Holy Spirit as he was praying and he got ready to do his ministry. If you're gonna go out and you're gonna do anything, you gotta pray first. You can't fool around. So is somebody going to sleep? <laughs> and it came to pass as he was teaching, there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were, had come out of every town of Galilee. They said, let's go see this guy. Let's go see his tricks. Now listen, when the Lord does something, it's not a trick. Not a trick at all. You want to let him in? Phil? Okay. And behold, men brought on a bed he was in a house and he was, somebody opened their house to Jesus. Would you open your house to the Lord? Would you open your house to the Lord? Maybe you're not free to do that yet, but one day you can open your house to the Lord. My apartment is kind of sad sometimes, but I open it to the Lord. I want the Lord's people to come in and Dr. Goblin and I are working it, fixing it up. And the kitty. She let us know she doesn't like it this way either. She wants a direct path <laughs> from one end to the next in the apartment. And so, how wonderful. All of these very smart Jewish men who knew the Torah, they were watching this. And they saw the power of the Lord was present to heal them, these people. And behold, men brought in a bed, a little cot, a man which, which was taken with the palsy. That means his hands were like this. 
and we didn't have any neurological training then in the year 2000 AD. We didn't have that. And so it had to come from God, period. So the men brought a man who was taken with a palsy. They sought the means to bring him in and to lay him before Jesus. And they couldn't find anybody to make room for him. Notice it's always hard to get room for the things of God to be done, for Jesus to be done. He was had to be born in a cow manger. There was no room for him in the inn. So there's always this problem. Don't fear. When somebody says, oh, that can't be done or that can't be done, don't fear. It will be done. If the Lord wants it done, it's going to be done. If we have to go outdoors in California, they won't let anybody sing in church. They won't let them read the Bible or the prayers in their prayer books. Some people have prayer books. They won't let them do it. Isn't that shocking? This was my first concern when I heard about all this going down. What's going to happen to the church? Well, maybe the church is going to rise up. If we have to go in the park and have our little service, we pass by a Jewish synagogue with little boys standing. Dr. Goba, how were they? They were standing up six feet apart in a front yard in Brooklyn having their service. That's cool, right? So they couldn't find which way they might bring him in because of the multitude. So they went on the house stop and they started cutting. Can you imagine sitting there and all of a sudden you see uh, sawdust falling? It's like, whoa, what's going on up there? They wanted to lower him and they took him in his, ch his couch and lowered him through a hole in the roof. That requires imagination. Would you be smart enough to lower somebody through a hole in the roof? I hope so. This is my favorite Bible story from a child. I was about five years old when I first heard it. And I thought, wow, I wish I had been there and seeing the guy coming down out of the ceiling. <laughs> this is really good. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said, Men, your sins are forgiven thee. He was forgiving them. Sometimes when we're helping somebody, like helping somebody get healed, for example, and we got a lot of people who are ill right now, Sister Maddie and Brother James, and Brother James has a, a doctor on the 16th of July, and I'm going to see Maddie tomorrow in her home with a space helmet on. She doesn't have the virus. She has endometrial cancer. And I'm gonna to go to sit with her and pray that the Holy Spirit will give her new strength to overcome this pain. And I do believe this is of the devil. I really do. Because she's standing up for Jesus in Alphabet City. She's standing up. Her family, they're not real believers yet. She's standing up to see them get saved. Now, some of you understand when your family's not believers, how heartbreaking that is, right? It hurts. And so she's been very sorrowful. Two sons, two daughters, a son, and her husband. They're very nice people, but she's just asking the Lord, please, Save them, and please, Lord, save my grandchildren. I want to see them get baptized. That's, she's not saying to heal me. She's saying save them. That's very sacrificial, right? Then we're going to go into the projects in Alphabet City, put up a card table, a couple of chairs for moi. We're going to sit down and give out tracts. We're going to ask the Lord to do something. Pastor, would you hand me that tea? Because my mouth is so dry. I promised the Lord if he'd get me going, I would go out. I would go forth in that neighborhood. There's a handful of Jewish people down there too. But it's predominantly Spanish. So I'm going to have Spanish tracks. So praise God. He saw these people and he saw their faith for their friend. They love, 
do you love a friend? If you hear that a friend of yours got sick, would you care about them to go to any length to get your friend healed or your relative healed? I know Miss Raquel, when her dad was sick over in uh, New Jersey, she would go every week and it would be a long journey, a long journey, getting back real late at night. Emma was with her sometimes, Orabel, but she went to pray for him. And it did do a lot of good. It did, Raquel, it did. The Lord will remember you for that. He'll remember you. So the scribes began saying, so here's this man who's like this, and he stopped moving. And the Pharisees and all the rabbis were like, yo, why does he forgive their sins over there? Who is he? Is he God or something? But the Lord could see, he could read their minds. He knew their thoughts. The Lord understood they were real grouchy. Can you imagine? If some little baby got healed or some person got healed and people are going, well, hmm, hmm, hmm. it's Sunday. And why does he think he's a big shot to heal these people? What's the big deal? That's another sad part of the gospel. When you come to Jesus, people will be jealous of you. They will be jealous. People in the house of God will be jealous sometimes. It's a shame, but it happens. You just got to deal with it. You got to go with the flow, right? I'm flowing right now. By the way, I want to do a commercial for Emma Ledesma. Emma has designed a wonderful YouTube. And she's come up with all kinds of interesting things for young teens. Emma, would you say the name of it so Velada can look at it? So the name is Emma's Exciting Life. I can put a link in it. In yeah, the Emma's chat. Exciting Life. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the first name I thought of when I was thinking of me. Wonderful. It. It's wonderful, Emma. And Emma, your name is a derivative of Ima, which in Hebrew means mother. So we pray that you're going to be a spiritual mother to many people through your talents. And sometimes Emma didn't feel like going to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and to her <laughs> art class. But her mother got her up and marched her out and she <laughs> went to the art class and she just, she, her natural talent is there, but it got better and better as she sat in art class. Isn't that wonderful? So sometimes the thing you don't want to do, if you go ahead and just do it, just do it. You ought to make a poster for your mirror. Just do it. And you go ahead and just do it. And then you see the Lord is in it. And he gave you that skill, Emma. I was very impressed with your drawings. Emma's amazing life. Okay. Now, so here are these people going, brr, 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 brr. <laughs> But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered, said, why do you reason, why do you think these things in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say, rise up and walk. Jesus wanted to heal and save. He wanted to do both, to heal and save. There's a picture right now of Emma's paints. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> Her paints and markers. She uses tin cans, very good. I'm gonna do that too. Me and the pastor have such a mess. So, but that they may know that the Son of God has power upon earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say to you, arise and take up your mat and go to your house. And immediately he got up before them and he took up that mattress and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Can you see him pulling his mattress out the door? Thanks, Jesus. Thank you, friends. I want you to come over next week. Uh -huh. And then 
Jesus is asked, he says, they that are whole and healthy don't need a physician, but they who are sick. Isn't that special? They who are sick. So, Lolita, why are you stretching out your fingers? Are you trying to straighten it? What? You can't hear? She can't hear, Phil. Yeah. Turn it on. You got to no, do... No, no, no. I'm just trying to copy a link, uh, Linda, because after Zoom is over, you cannot go back and copy and paste. Okay, right? what's the link? A link for Emma putting the link to her... Uh... What's the link, Emma? Say it. Nice and loud. So no, it's, it's, uh, if you I can't really it. say it. I have to click it's, it. If you click it, it saves it to your device. Well, should I send your phone number to Emma's mother? I'll do that. Okay. All right. So he rose up and went to his own house and everybody was full of fear. They said, we've seen strange things. Ooh, we've seen these real weird things. This Jesus has just healed this man who was like this. And he probably had a cane. So how exciting is that? These are, it, I, I don't know, none of us are neurologists, but Ben knows somebody who can do neurology, his daddy. Neurology had not been invented then. They couldn't go and fix the man's brain. They couldn't give him medication like Neurontin for his nerve fibers. They couldn't heal him, but the Lord healed him. The Lord healed him. And what is so powerful about that, that the Lord healed him. I love that. So all the people were glorifying God. It's like, you rabbis over there, be quiet. Shut your face. Because here is the one who heals. You don't heal us. He healed us. And it was very exciting that day. And I know that man that was healed never forgot it. I know he never forgot it. So those that are whole don't need a physician, but those that are sick. And I'm praying that many of you will go into medical schools. You could go many places in the Caribbean to medical school. Yes, you could. And the Lord could raise you up to treat people. Okay, I'm going to sing. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, thy healer. I sent my word. I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord, that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word. And he disease. I am the Lord, the your healer. For if you don't know what that is, I'm asking you, Lord, to be merciful. We're going to supernaturally cut a hole in the roof and lower Madeline. We're doing it like like a, an exercise, sanctified imagination. We're going to lower Madeline to your nail pierced feet. And we're going to lower James Washington to your nail-pierced feet. And Lord, I want to ask them to lower me to your nail-pierced feet. Because I'm a little flaky. And I want to be straight on in my mind and body and walk properly. My left leg is not working well. And I need that, Lord, to run the race. So I'm just going to cry out to you. And Lord, I've made many promises to you, which I am keeping. One of them was to go to Madeline's neighborhood. If you would raise me up, which you've done, and I would stand there. The pastor's going to bring a table, a card table. I'm going to sit down with a chair, and Madeline's going to sit with a chair, and we're going to give out Spanish tracts. And we're going to overcome evil with good. Okay? We're going to overcome evil with good. Sometimes you should, thank you, Lord. You should, amen. You should make a promise to the Lord. Lord, if you do this, I'll do that. I'm just going to make a promise to you. If you give this, I'm going to give that. Now, I'm asking the Lord for another job this summer because I want to give 
of the job to the publication, the translation of the Bible for the Pakistanis and the Afghanis and the Iranians. Do you know how hot that area is over there? I'm not talking about 92 degrees. I'm talking about it could blow any minute and people need to be saved. They need to be saved. So we're going to ask, do you know? People can get a one page for a dollar translated. And so the pastor was told about this and a man's already helped us a little. But how exciting that is. One dollar a page. Very exciting. So we're going to see this happen. And we already know many of the Southeastern Asian girls are starting to think about Jesus. They're starting to meditate on Jesus. And we're really excited in our church, the ones I teach. So I, we're just praying, hallelujah, Lord, that you would give them signs and wonders and visions. And I pray for these children that you give them signs and wonders and visions and help them, hallelujah. 